So in this video I'm going to talk about finishing off the bulldozer. I've already painted the back half of it and I had masked the front half to keep that black. And the reason why is I'm then going to paint this up um, silver and do some weathering effects. The weathering technique I'm doing is based on the one from Imperial Armour Masterclass Volume 1. So I swapped the mask around, so this section is the, my undercoat of the Chaos Black. I want to now paint this section, but I've masked up the back because this is already painted and I don't want to damage and accidentally paint over any of that when I use my airbrush. So the next step is to do a metallic effect on this front section. I'm going to use several colours of silver, starting with lead belcher. I'll probably mix it first with a bit of black so it's quite dark. Then I'll go on to lead belcher and then a final highlight of iron breaker. So here you can see the Badon Black and Lead Belcher mix. It gives you a really nice dark metallic colour. It's still got some of the shine coming through though. So I've finished off the metallic colours. I did one more layer that was Lead Belcher, but I'd mix it this time with Iron Breaker, just to give it a slightly lighter tone to bridge the gap between the two. And then I did a final coat with the Iron Breaker just on its own. And that one I was really sort of sparse, so you get these kind of slightly dark patches showing through around just to give it a slightly more natural sort of beaten metal effect. So to make the metallic colours more realistic, I'm going to now apply several different washes. So here's my bulldozer now with the washes. Um, it's a very similar technique to the heat distortion effect that I've talked about in a previous video. Um, basically you take a kind of silver colour and then you slowly apply it with the airbrush different kind of um, washes of colour but rather than doing a banding effect to so create a kind of rainbow heat effect this time you're sort of randomly applying it all across to give this kind of beaten metal and kind of as if it's reflecting different colours off of the metal kind of makes it a lot more natural and realistic so I applied three different colours. I did a brown, so I just used my normal Agrax Earthshade. So I used Xerus Purple. I'd mixed in a very tiny amount with some water and Lamian Medium to create a wash suitable for my airbrush. So I then used Uriel Yellow, and again with the purple, I turned this into a wash. You don't actually need a lot of the paint because you're doing a very small amount of wash, so your water and the Lamian medium ratio is much higher than the paint. Probably one part to five parts water. And for good measure, I probably put in two parts Lamian medium. And that gave you enough paint in the airbrush to do both dozer blades. Now getting to the nitty gritty of the weathering effect, I'm actually now going to put some purity seal down to seal this paint job in because I don't want to ruin it with the next step. Um, rather than using purity seal, I'm just going to use my Ard Coat gloss and I'm going to mix that down and thin it down with a Lamian medium so it's suitable for my airbrush. That's going to seal and protect this in for the next step. Once I've done that, I'm going to actually use some hairspray. So just some cheap old hairspray, any old kind is good. You put that down in a few thin coats. Once that's dry, you then just paint on top of it. So I'm going to use my Eshrin and Skeven Blight Dinge to create a new layer on top. That's going to match the back design so it will look like the whole bulldozer blade is painted. From there, I can actually use some hot water and a brush and slowly dab on here. The hot water will act with the hairspray allowing you to lift off the layer of paint above. This is why it's quite important to put the purity seal down protecting the paint job below. But what it will do is allow you to kind of chip off the grey kind of paint coat that's on the tank, revealing the metal below. So I should hopefully get a really nice effect with the kind of scratched up bulldozer blade showing this metal beneath. So I've put my purity seal down, which was really uh, my Laheim mixed with Art Coat for my airbrush. So that kind of protected this surface underneath. Once I had completely dried, I put down a couple of coats of my hairspray. I had to let it dry between each coat. I didn't want to get any kind of thick pools gathering in the corners, which I noticed it was starting to do. 
um, but I use my airbrush just to kind of blow dry that a bit quicker. You can now see it's got quite a shiny finish to it. So I now just need to paint this section as if it was a regular part of my tank. So I've finished painting up the bulldozer blade using my Eshin Grey Scabbin by Dinge and very subtly using the Dawnstone just sort of on this area to brighten that up and on all of the teeth. I then use my Rhinox Hide to weather all the rivets just like I have previously. I had taken off the masking tape at the back and then just airbrushed the sort of join just to make sure it looked a bit more seamless. I've just test fitted the bulldozer blade against the actual tank just to compare the colours. I would say the bulldozer is slightly lighter. That's because I didn't have a base black to go from when I was building up the colour. It was on silver which is already much lighter. Overall, I don't think it's too dissimilar, so it's not going to be a real issue. So the next step is to actually start weathering. However, I want to put my Aquila down first before I do that, so I can hopefully distress the decal slightly as I'm doing the rest of the bulldozer. So I put the transfer down on the front bulldozer blade. I've just uh, put the bulldozer on the model just so you can get a sense of what it looks like. So here's a close-up view of one of the bulldozers. This one fixed really well. I just had to use some cold water to put it down. It was a little bit tricky, but it ended up looking really good. By using cold water, I kind of made sure I didn't damage this um, paintwork because when I'm doing the weathering technique next, I use a combination of hot water and a brush to lightly scrub off this paint. And I'm basically using the hot water to sort of melt the hairspray layer underneath this paint. What I did notice was the paint was slightly bobbling as I was using too much water here, but in the end it was okay. I did a couple of sprays of Lamian Medium just to secure the transfer down. However, I've not used a gloss or anything to permanently fix it. So it does mean when I'm doing the weathering technique, the Lamian Medium can lift off just as easily as the paint. So there's a good chance I can kind of distress this transfer slightly without ruining it. This is the second version of a bulldozer blade. This one's got a lot more battle damage on it. Now, when I was placing the Aquila down, as you can see, it doesn't quite line up to the center. If you look at the rivet there and then the tail of the Aquila, it's slightly off. So I was trying to shift it over and I ended up damaging the transfer. So as you can see, this section of the wing came off this bit was peeling, so it's got a few cracks in it. Now, that's not too much of a problem because I can just distress this one to look seriously damaged. Um, the only downside is you can see there was obviously some slight air bubbles when the transfer was put down because you can see some lighter bits where you can see the rim and edge of the transfer a lot more than you can on the other one. So the next step is to take a brush and some hot water and I can lightly dab it on this kind of top layer of paint. Water will soak through to the hairspray level, melting the hairspray, and it'll allow you to lift off this top layer of paint. So I should get a really nice random weathered effect showing the metal beneath. So I finally got my weathering effect done. I just applied some water onto it and let it kind of soak in for a few seconds before trying to brush it off. Um, I was using the small dry brush um, just to wipe it off, so I was sort of doing like this kind of technique. Um, I did find using the stippling brush, however, was a little bit better because it's um, the bristles are much thicker, so actually it was really good for just doing the initial brush to get the layers of paint off because I've done several coats of paint. Um, it was actually a bit tricky to get the paint to lift off, but once you'd lifted it off in one area, it was much easier to use the small dry brush just to lift off the rest. So this is the one with the kind of completed Aquila that hadn't broken. Um, so I didn't do too much weathering on this one. I kind of only did a little bit on the decal. I had to use my knife just to kind of chip off bits of the transfer. Overall, I think that one looks pretty good and a little bit more understated than the other. 
So here is the second one that I've done a really kind of heavy weathering effect on and that one looks really good. So you can't really see the fact that the decal had kind of cracked and come off in places. The bit of the wing that had come off I decided to completely remove that and kind of scratch up that whole area. There's a few areas such as here and here you can see the tone of the silver change and that's because I believe I was actually lifting off part of my kind of purity silk layer because it was kind of coming off in quite gloopy clumps. And I think that probably is because I used a mixture of the Lamian Medium and the Ard Coat Gloss for my airbrush. So that probably wasn't ideal. Maybe I should have just used the Purity Seal Spray to kind of really seal that layer in. But ultimately that wasn't too bad. You just need to make sure that where the paint lifts, um, you kind of knock it back but then if you don't want any more to lift off you just need to let that whole area dry and it will seem to sort of sit back down again. I then use my large dry brush just to clean up the model just by kind of doing a few brush strokes along just because there's little flecks of paint here and there and that just helped kind of also dry it off as well. So here is the finished bulldozer with the mud effects. I had sealed down the original layers. Um, I just used a mix of Ard Coat, uh, Lamian and water um, and put that through my airbrush. You can, of course, use uh, Purity Seal Spray. That will do the job just as fine. So I put my three lots of weathering powder down. Um, I've got the Dry Mud, Medium Earth and Light Earth. With the weathering powders, I put down an even coating of Dry Mud all along the bottom, pretty much all the way across. Uh, and that's obviously the darkest colour and then I sort of sprinkled and was a bit more sparingly with the medium earth and the light earth. So I put some white spirit through my airbrush and sprayed it down. The weathering powders soak up that white spirit. It also helps blend all the different colours together. What will then happen is the white spirit will evaporate. Uh, the weathering powders will go hard again but it helps affix it to the model. What you can then do is do several different coats of the white spirit and if needed to you could touch up in certain areas uh, by sprinkling more weathering powders down until you're sort of happy with the variation in the colours. What I then did was use some white spirit and sprayed it onto the teeth and with the airbrush just pumped some air down to help blow off some of the weathering powders from the teeth. Uh, my thinking here is the teeth is going to be the thing that's going to impact most um, as it sort of as the tank's going along. So the teeth will actually have less mud on it than the area at the back where it's going to be a bit more dried and caked on. Now, finally, what you can do is just spray down some lamy and medium that will help seal it all in. So here you go, here's both of the bulldozers. The bottom one is the other one that I did. You can see I use slightly more dry mud in the corners, just in these little recesses. That's all for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give me a like or drop me a comment below. For more videos in this series, subscribe to this channel or visit my new website, beyondthetabletop.com. We've almost finished with this series on the Storm Guy Mirror. The next video will focus painting up all the extra details on the Storm Guy Mirror. Until then, take care.